In prior videos we have defined the equation of state for an ideal gas and we have seen deviations from ideality as what happens in real gases. The main differences between ideal gases and real gases is that in ideal gases the interactions, attractive or repulsion between gas particles are negligible but uh, in real gases uh, you actually have that those interactions cannot be neglected. Right, so we have seen uh, ways to treat non-ideality, uh, such as a virial equation of state, and we have started to see how those attractions and repulsions that take place between gas particles shape uh, the properties of those real gases. Now in this video we're going to approach the phenomenon of uh, interactions between gas particles from a different perspective, which is the concept of condensation. Right, so condensation is something that we observe uh, every day when the gas uh, uh, turns into a liquid and it turns out that that actually is a uh, deviation from ideality. The reason that you get condensation is because at some temperature the attractions between the gas particles uh, are much stronger than thermal motion and those gas particles coalesce into a liquid and condense. Okay, so again condensation is really uh, you know, a demonstration of non-ideality. Okay, so let's try, try, try to see if we can learn a little bit about condensation and uh, discover new phenomena such as the critical point in substances. All right, so uh, remember that uh, from the ideal gas equation of state, we uh, came uh, with uh, you know the demonstration that at some temperature, okay, you have that this product is constant. Uh, if we actually use here the more volume, then this constant only depends on temperature. Okay, so we can actually uh, uh, go and, and plot uh, these graphs. So we can draw here a plot of pressure versus smaller volume. I'm actually going to make it a little uh, bigger. Okay, here we go. So pressure versus more volume. And uh, this will be something that we call isotherms, right? Because this constant depends on temperature, you will have lines uh, at different temperatures. Okay, so if we go to really high temperatures, then we have uh, exactly what you expect with this, this equation. And again, this only applies for uh, the ideal case. Okay, so this would be a temperature uh, T1, and then if you lower the temperature, you will have another isotherm, temperature T2, the temperature increases this way. But now we can actually go to really low temperatures or much lower temperatures than this, and start to observe the phenomenon of condensation. Okay, so you can have a gas at low pressure and really high molar volumes, low temperature, and then what happens is that uh, that isotherm looks like this. It actually increases much as it does at higher temperatures, but it reaches a point in which you actually uh, see that there's a decrease in the molar volume with a change in pressure until you get to a different point where all of a sudden uh, there's a turnover in this curve and now if you want to decrease the molar volume, uh, you have to apply a huge amount of pressure. Okay, so this graph is quite different because again, this is a region that is quite important right here of zero slope, okay? And uh, that is actually what condensation really is. Uh, all right, so let's uh, draw a few, more, a few more of these lines of zero slope and then the turnover and so forth. This actually defines a region, which is where the condensation takes place and that's what we're going to explain in the rest of this video. Okay, so um, uh, we're actually going to draw an important boundary here, which is the isotherm, the curve, uh, that reaches, uh, that corresponds to that point, okay, right uh, uh, in that apex of that uh, region, this point. This is what we call the critical isotherm, so T sub C, where C would be critical, and we're also going to define exactly what the meaning of this uh, critical point or critical isotherm is. Right, so let's see uh, what the phases that are stable uh, are in this diagram. Okay, so notice that uh, right at this point, what you actually have is a gas, right? So this is, this is what you have right here. It's just a gas. And again, what you're trying to do, if you think about this, is uh, uh, you're applying pressure to this gas, and then the molar volume is uh, uh, decreasing. Right, so that's what happens here and then there. Okay, great. Uh, but it comes to a point. It comes to a point where you actually don't change the pressure at all, and yet the molar volume decreases. Okay, so so that is actually what happens in condensation. 
Okay, notice that in condensation, you have that those gas particles are coalescing into the liquid. And of course, the liquid occupies much less molar volume than a gas. So, so the molar volume is decreasing with it, you having to change uh, that pressure as the gas is turning into the liquid. Okay, so this is the, uh, the area where condensation takes place and what you actually have is a coexistence of two phases, the gas and the liquid phase. Okay, now when you reach this point, what happens is that all of the gas has turned into the liquid and now you have only liquid. Right, so if you try to uh, reduce the molar volume of the liquid, uh, you're going to have to apply a lot of pressure. That's what you have here, this huge uh, steep turnover, where again, uh, you need to apply really large pressures before that molar, molar volume becomes smaller. Liquids are highly incompressible. So what you have here is the liquid region. Okay, so uh, notice that that point uh, right here is the, uh, represents the highest temperature uh, uh, that, uh, uh, or the, uh, yeah, the highest temperature at, at which you can observe the liquid. Right? If you actually go above that, there's no more condensation region, there's no more liquid to be found. Okay, so the question is, well, what is it about, what do you have about this temperature? Well, notice that here you would start with the gas, but you continue to compress, 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 and the liquid will never be found. In this region right here, uh, what you actually have is a super dense uh, fluid, uh, which has properties of gas and also properties of liquid, and that's what we call a supercritical fluid. Okay, so that will be what we call the supercritical region uh, or supercritical fluid. Okay, up here. Um, right, good. So, uh, again, uh, this is the critical isotherm, and again, that's kind of the boundary, uh, and above that temperature, you will never observe the liquid no matter how high the pressure, and below that temperature, then you may observe the liquid. That is the critical temperature. Okay, so that critical temperature actually changes from substance to substance. And uh, the critical point is actually a fingerprint for various substances. So I'm going to write here uh, the critical temperature, I'm gonna write the uh, critical molar volume, and the critical pressure for uh, uh, CO2, which is um, one of the gases for which we actually have applications of that supercritical fluid state and it turns out that uh, it's not difficult to generate a supercritical uh, fluid for CO2 because the temperature of the uh, critical isotherm, right, the critical temperature is 304 Kelvin which is just slightly above room temperature. On a warm day you can reach this temperature no problem. Okay, uh, the uh, critical molar volume is 0 0.094 liters per mole and then uh, the critical pressure is 72 ATMs, right? So uh, this is uh, high pressure, so you actually need to have specialized devices that can withstand pressure, but it's not prohibitive, a prohibitive uh, a high pressure. So yeah, as we will see in future units, uh, supercritical CO2 uh, finds application in many fields because uh, it has very interesting properties and you can produce the supercritical fluid relatively easily. Now for water, for example, these numbers would all change, okay? And that again tells you that the supercritical, uh, the critical point, that point right here, uh, changes from, from substance to substance. Okay, so for water, uh, the temperature is, is about 647 Kelvin, so about two times as, as high as this one. Uh, the molar volume is about half this one, so 55 cubic centimeters per mole. And then the pressure is about three times as much as that one. 218 ATMs. Okay, so again, that, that critical point uh, changes from substance to substance. Now, all substances uh, are going to have this, this uh, critical point, okay, so, so uh, under circum some conditions, you can always condense the gas into the liquid. And again, what that means is that whether a gas is, ad uh, is ideal or real really only depends on the conditions, okay? As long as a, as a gas can be condensed into the liquid, then that is a manifestation of non-ideality. Okay, we're going to conclude this uh, short video by talking about uh, exactly how we can discuss this deviation from non-ideality in terms of metrics that we have already studied. But remember that the compression factor is a really good benchmark for uh, determining whether you're in the ideal case or uh, whether the ideal case approximation breaks them a value of z uh, larger than or equal to 1 would be ideal case and then different from 1 would be a real case.
Okay, remember that the definition of uh, the compression factor is given by this equation. And again, if you have an ideal gas, that should be one. Real gas deviations from ideality different from one. What we can actually do is calculate the value of the compression factor at the critical point just to show that this really happens when uh, gases do not behave ideally. Right? So we can actually just put, put in here all of the variables of the critical point okay, uh, for various gases here, critical, and actually what happens is that for many, many, many examples you find that uh, this value of the compression factor at the critical point is about 0.3, which is quite far away from the ideal case, uh, should be 1. Right, and that, that tells you that, that yes, condensation is a phenomenon that stems from non-ideality. As a matter of fact, we can actually wrap up this video by noticing that uh, this value is less than 1. And uh, when you have values less than 1, that means that attractions uh, are dominating the interactions between the gas particles. Okay, so condensation, again, uh, this reconciles quite nicely our understanding of condensation, which is what happens when under some temperature you actually have that the attractions between gas particles are strong enough for those gas particles to condense into a liquid phase. Okay. In the next few videos, we're going to continue to talk about non-ideal equations uh, of state uh, by introducing the Van der Waals equation of state.